Maurice? Good morning. Good morning. How's my sound level? Sounds good. Okay, thank you. Ms. Kukla? Yes, good morning. Good morning. It's 930. Shall we start? Yes. Good morning, everyone. My name is Liz Kukla. I'm the Secretary of the Board of Zoning Appeals, and I'm going to read the preamble for you this morning, this October 31st, 2022. In compliance with notification requirements of the city's open meeting law in section 101, Point zero two one of the codified ordinances of Cleveland, Ohio, 1976. Notice of this meeting has been publicly posted. All boards and commissions under the purview of the city planning department conducts its meetings according to Robert's rules of order. Actions during the meeting will be taken by voice vote. Abstentions from any vote due to a conflict of interest should be stated for the record prior to the taking of any vote. In order to ensure that everyone participating in the meeting have the opportunity to be heard, we ask that you use the raise hand feature before asking a question or making a comment. The raise hand feature can be found in the participants panel on the desktop in mobile version and activated by clicking the hand icon. Please wait for the chair facilitator to recognize you and be sure to select unmute and announce yourself before you speak. When finished speaking, please lower your hand by clicking on the raise hand icon again and mute your microphone. We will also be utilizing the chat feature to communicate with participants. The chat feature can be activated by clicking the chat button located on the bottom of the WebEx screen. Please note that call-in users can unmute by using star six. All meeting activity is being recorded via the WebEx platform. These proceedings are also being live streamed via YouTube for public view. We provided a link to the meeting for those who wish to speak on a particular case via our website and email. All requests to speak on a particular matter have been considered. We have also received emails from those who have provided written comments on a particular matter. Back to you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Would you please call the roll? Sure. Uh, Ms. Britt will not be here this morning. Uh, right. So Ms. Roga? Present. Ms. Brown? Present. Ms. Holzer? Present. Ms. Bates? Present. Okay, we have a quorum with four, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, we will announce that uh, it is necessary to have three affirmative votes on any issue since we're short one person. We'd like to let all the appellants know that are here today that for a motion to pass, it will need three affirmative votes since there are only four members and you may postpone your case to another day. Uh, when we have a full complement of board members. Uh, uh, Ms. Kukla, would you like to read any postponements? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Um, we do have two this morning um, regarding 2915 Detroit Avenue. This uh, information came in late on Friday. Since we only have four members here today, we um, and we have two recusals we will have to postpone this case until we have 
all five members present. Um, and those cases again are regarding 2915 Detroit Avenue. That's calendar number 22-188 and 22-172. Uh, so Madam Chair, the new date um, could be November 14th or November 21st. We have uh, um, full agendas or are very close to full agendas for both of those. Uh, November 21st works best for the office, but I know that the appellant is anxious to keep the case moving. Okay. Um, can we squeeze it in on the earlier date? Sure, we can. Okay. We will, we will make that happen. All right. So that's November 14th, correct? Correct. So anyone right. here for 2915 Detroit Avenue LLC um, proposing to make changes to add uses, including office, cafe, yoga studio, bar, restaurant, these two cases, 22188 and 22172, will not be heard today. Um, they have been postponed to November 14th. Anyone present for that case, of course, can um, um, go home unless they want to and um, continue and to listen to our public meeting this morning. Um, and if you received a notice in the mail, you will receive a notice in the mail again. So. Um, that's all that we have. Madam Chair, I do see that we have Marka Fields, Assistant Director of City Planning here this morning. Okay. Um, she is here for a particular case. All right. We might want to uh, move that one up for her. We have no council people present that I can see. So uh, I am uh, agreeable to moving uh, the case that Ms. Fields is uh, attending to the top of the agenda. Okay, sounds good. Um, that would be calendar number 22-186 regarding 17426 Harvard Road. Okay. All right. There we go. Okay, just got it. Okay, Ms. Holster, would you like to read the case into the record, please? Thank you. Good morning. Um, our first case is calendar number 22-186. This is at 17426 Harvard Road. JSD Mac LLC proposes to construct an accessory off-street parking lot in a C2 local retail business district and an urban form overlay district. The owner appeals for relief, relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances as stated in the agenda and the public record of which there are four. And there is a note here that a lot consolidation is required. Um, and with that, I will hand it over to Ms. Brown for the oath. Uh, good morning and thank you. I'm swearing in all who are present for this case. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Please raise your hand, reply I do, state your name and your address please. I do. I do. Sharon Reed. My address is 522 Kipling Court, Richmond Heights, Ohio. I do. This is William J. Fugo, Jr. I'm the architect on the project. Uh, 2424 Princeton Road, Cleveland Heights, Ohio, 44118. <laughs> I do, Yativa Thompson, 3745 Lander Road, Orange Village, Ohio. Anyone else for this case? Hey, Madam Chair. Member Faith, did we Thank you. Through? Okay. Mr. Fugo, are you going to be the uh, spokesperson for the appellant on this case? Um, I am. All right. So if you'd like to tell us what you'd like to do here. Oh, Madam Chair, we have the history first. Oh, sorry. Yes, thank you. That's all right, history Madam Chair. property. So uh, Madam Chair, you may remember this case in calendar number 20-70. Yes. A variance was granted to establish a parking lot at this site. Um, 
believe that the, the variance rights have expired. So the applicant is here today to reapply. Um, I did send the resolution to Maurice Rulins. I'm not sure if he has it available for the screen. Um, and this morning we are reviewing the case again. I can read the resolution for you. There were no conditions made other than um, the architect stated that the parking lot will be properly paved, drained, and landscaped. Um, and again, this is to allow the parking lot in the local retail business district and urban form overlay district. Um, and at the time, Madam Chair, the two code sections that were being appealed were code section 327.04E, which state that a site plan should be a standard scale and should include property lines, dimensions, fence, and all other features of the property. Um, section 348.03C4, which states that a parking lot as a use is prohibited in an urban form overlay district. So it was a use variance as well as an area variance at the time. And those variances were granted with the understanding that the architect will supply a drawing showing that it will be properly paved, drained, and landscaped. And we received that. Okay. Great. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you, Ms. Kukla. Uh, could we please have the legal standard for the case, please? Madam Chair, members of the board, appellant is requesting area variances from the driveway and landscaping regulations of the zoning code. To obtain the area variances, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variances will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Fugo. To you, would you like to tell us what you want to do here? Okay, um, just as background, the, that previous zoning um, appeal, that was under a previous architect. So the, the drawings that weren't to scale, that had nothing to do with me. Um, we met all those requirements about kind of basic things. Um, this, well, we're, we're upgrading the site and it's already been reviewed by the architecture review design board and we meet their landscaping requirements. It's our understanding. Um, the improvements were made to this site before I was brought on. They put in an ornamental aluminum fence that you can see in the photographs that are based on the, what the previous curb cut and layout of the site was. Um, as well as um, some security, wood fencing on two of the three sides and a bumper plus railing on the west side. So we're asking for the approval of this with, with significant landscaping. There's this landscaping strip as required along the street with the current uh, curb cut. That's what we're asking for. Sorry. Mr. Fugo, could you explain the parking that's along the street there? I see cars on the sidewalk. Yeah. Um, That, that's pre-existing parking, and I was not engaged to analyze anything other than the lot that's in the middle. So that's previous. I had no, you know, that that parking there <laughs> predates my involvement on the project. So um, it is their current parking, which their lot, this new lot will give them additional parking. Okay. Uh so we have uh, Sharon Reed. Would you like to make comment? Um, I have, we have very little to say. We're just trying to improve the area. Um, and that 
lot that you see there with the um, fence around it. Um, we got that approval. Um, we got a permit for that and it's approved. Um, when we first started, that lot was like a junkyard. And that's why we tried to hurry to get the fence up because people were, it had, uh, were dumping debris there. You name it, tires, mattresses. And um, so once we got the lot clean up and got, you know, the border of the fence around, it improved a lot. And we we keep an eye on it because well, that happened to us several times with them dumping bottles and it was just really, really bad. I, I guess we don't have any pictures of how it looked before, but um, so, you know, then we decided it'd be good to pave it so our customers can, you know, um, it get kind of muddy over there and stuff. And so then that's when we, you know, had, we had a survey and there were three lots and we consolidated them that per, you know, the survey. So we've been working on this four years, going on five. So that's about it. So we just- Okay. Went to so the you are the building owner, Ms. Reed? Yes, I am. Okay. And you mentioned that the three lots have been consolidated. Has that been finalized? Yes, yes. yes. Now, there was three permanent parcels. They've been consolidated into one. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, so moving on to Ms. Thompson, do you have any statement you'd like to make? Um, yes, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. I am the property owner at 40, 66 East 175th. That property, that home there um, is directly adjacent to the um, property that's in question. Um, when you speak of the wooden fence um, that was erected, um, that is directly up against my property, um, I was never uh, notified that that fence was going up and given a chance to speak on that. I have uh, a huge concern because when that fence was put in, um, the aluminum fence in the front of the uh, owner, Mr. Ms. Reed's property that was erected, there's gravel in that lot. And when that fence was put up, there were several, there's six huge boulders that were on the gravel property that were taken and moved to the driveway of my property. I know this to be true because I have photos showing where the boulders, the exact imprint of where the boulders were removed and the gravel, and then these boulders were put on my property. Um, Ms. Reed, I didn't know that you were the owner of a property. Uh, a young man came out and spoke to me one day when one of his patrons was parked in the driveway of my property, and he presented himself as the owner. So I know we can't go back and we're speaking on the matter at hand, but I have contacted the councilman in this area for over a year and been put off. And I've gotten a quote of $2,500 to move these boulders that were placed onto my property. And the pictures, I mean, you know, you don't need to be, um, a brain surgeon to understand here's the picture of the boulder the exact shape and here's the picture of where it was removed on your property because whoever did it didn't have the common sense to take the gravel and go back over it and and move the spot where they had removed the boulder and placed it on my property so do i speak with miss reed about this do i speak with this young man who presented himself he would not give me his name nor his email nor his phone number <laughs> And I know it's not the proper form, but I'm here today to try and get some idea of whom do I speak to about these boulders that were placed from your property onto mine. And I am a 66-year-old 
handicapped senior citizen. I did not move boulders onto my own property. Well, um, we can speak. If you want to give me your number, then I can speak to you um, after the meeting. But, but Miss Reed, yes. I'll give I'll give you a moment to respond. But um, Mr. Rulins, could you please put the view back where um, the aerial view where we can see Miss Thompson's house? Thank you. So and I've been trying to sell that property, and I cannot sell it because garbage from the bar remains to like you said miss reed you know people put mattresses and all kinds of they come dumping things and the garbage that's been on my property is the bags that have opened are directly the garbage from your um, bar so miss thompson okay. your your home is directly is we're looking at this at this view your home is directly above the yellow square is that correct Yes, that would be. And um, where were the boulders? The boulders, um, Miss Faith, are my property. Is if you look in the upper left-hand corner of the square there, see that home? Yes, that home right there. Mm -hmm. And the boulders, because I closed and locked a gate because so much garbage was being placed back there, and the boulders were in that in the back of that gate in the driveway area. And I have I I have over fifty pictures. Okay. All right. Uh, Ms. Reed, you can respond now, please. Yeah. Um, we have no knowledge of the boulders. I am the owner. But uh, as I was saying, um, oh, that house, since we've owned it, it's been abandoned. And we, we have no reason to put um, the trash. We, we've seen people dump trash, just like they dumped it on our yard. We have a dumpster and we have it, um, the uh, trash picked up twice a week. So we don't, that's not our trash. We have no reason. We wouldn't do that anyway. Ms. Reed, could you tell me about the boulders? Did you uh, uh, or want a contractor you may have hired place the boulders in that position? No, I. we wouldn't do that. The contractor would not move. Um, it, it was a short fence because it was already existing wood fence and we just um, added on to the end of it. But okay. um, no, we wouldn't do that. All right. Thank you. Um, Th this all predated my involvement, but if you see where the fence jogs to the south, mm -hmm. yes. part, part of that was they were put in at two different times. I, uh, the longer part that's closer to Mrs. Thompson's house, that's older than the rest of it. So I have no idea the history of this, but they are they were put in at two different times. Okay. May I you, go. please? Um, I'm sorry, I can't see the raise your hand feature, and I'm sorry to speak sure. out. Briefly, um, Ms. Thompson, please. Yes, thank you. Um, Ms. Reed, uh, I would like to give you my email address so that you can send me your contact information and then I can send you the photos that I have in email so that we may review them together and go over this in a um, neighborly fashion and not bother the city with this. Okay. Be so my email address Ms. is Thompson, I just want to remind you that this is um, this is live stream. So this is public meeting. So your information will be heard by the public. Miss Faith, can you give Miss Reed my email address? Um, we can go through our secretary for that. I think Miss Kukla, are you willing to do that? Ms. Thompson, are you able to put it in the chat box and send it to um, Ms. Kukla? Um, is the chat box the one that has the CC in the, in the... It's all the way at the bottom of your screen to the far right. It says chat. I don't see that. Okay. Um... I don't mind giving my email address live. Okay. It's okay. All right. Then um, go ahead. Miss Reed, are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay. It's T is in Tom, E is in Evergreen, B as in Victor, 
A is an apple, P as in pencil, I is an in ink, N is in Nancy at gmail.com. Okay, excellent. All right, moving on. Um, Ms. Fields, would you like to speak on this issue? Yes. Um, so this uh, particular project is in the design review district. We did review the new parking lot. Um, when we, it was brought to us back in 2020, we had um, requested some changes. Uh, we also asked about the existing parking lot. And what we were told at that time was that we were just to review the new parking lot. So that's what we reviewed. The plans that were submitted, we approved. They did all the things that we asked them to do, which is the landscaping. Um, we asked for changes to fencing, um, configuration of some of the spaces, different things like that. And so they complied with all of that for the new parking lot. Um, then we, we saw that it was written up for uh, zoning and it talked about the landscaping. And so there was a little bit of confusion there um, because what we requested in the, in the plans was a six foot landscape strip. So when I went over and talked to the plans examiner, Lisa Ray, what she said was that it was actually addressing the existing lot, which as you can see has no landscaping and the uh, curb cuts are much wider than what's allowed by code. That is not something that we reviewed or approved. And just wanted to um, add also that we are um, working on a vision zero project, which is to reduce um, uh, fatalities and injuries to due to pedestrian in crashes. So this is not something that we would ever recommend because it goes over the sidewalk. As you can see, there's parking on the sidewalk. And you also have, um, in order for you to get in and out of the spaces, you, the only way that you can do it is to drive down the sidewalk. So this, is, this, this condition here was an existing condition, but it's not something that we reviewed or approved or even would approve if it did come to us. Um, the consolidation from my understanding is on the three lots that were used to make the new parking lot, it was not, from my understanding, consolidated with this particular lot here. So I think that's why the variance was there. Rick Riccardi, Rick Riccardi can probably give you a little bit more um, information about that and clarity on that. Great, thank you. Mr. Riccardi, would, would you like to uh, speak to that? Yes. Um, first of all, that's correct. The consolidation issue was was kind of glossed over by the appellant when he, she said that the lots have been consolidated. The only lots that have been consolidated were the lots that were made to create the new lot, the, the new parking lot. Um, what needs to be consolidated is the lot that the building is on and that very non-conforming, not legal parking lot needs to be consolidated with the new parking lot. Now, if that's not done, then the use is not permitted um, because this is in the urban form overlay district and a parking lot as a, a standalone parking lot is not permitted as that use. Um, it, it's not a permitted use. Now, when that lot is consolidated, um, all the conditions become a, a part of the review including that uh, very non-conforming parking um, uh, setup that they have now. Uh, as you can see, it, it's extremely dangerous. Uh, you see that right there, the actually parking on the sidewalk. And I think one has to question, if you're building this huge lot, why would you need those, those extra spaces there anyway? Uh, so, what the board has to look at is, uh, are you going to the, continue to allow the, the non-existing non uh, parking situation and a non-existing landscaping situation um, as a continuation of the non-conforming use? Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Mr. Riccardi, what you're saying is the building now needs to be consolidated with the uh, three parcels that were already consolidated, so they have a continuous uh, parcel of those four lots. Is that correct? That's correct, because a standalone parking lot 
you know, not consolidated um, is not permitted in in the zoning code. Um, is that is that part of the overlay requirements? Because is it because it's in that district that they have to be one parcel? That's correct. The urban form overlay district does not allow a parking lot as a as a main um, and sole use. Um, this was a raised brought up before, and to my knowledge, and we discussed that that the building does not have to be connected with the parking lot. Um, there are many um, parking lots that are not connected with the building in the city. Um, we may decide later that we want to sell that lot to the next door owner or something. We were told that that was in a condition that that parking lot have to be connected to the building. Well, uh, Ms. Reed, Mr. Riccardi just told you that it does. So that's something that needs to be addressed. And um, uh, the, the parking that's existing now, particularly the cars that are on the sidewalk, also needs to be addressed. I'm going to turn this to my board if anyone has questions or comments. Uh, Madam Chair, I do. Perhaps the new urban form overlay was adopted since this project started, since this sounds like it's been over time. Is that the case? Ms. Fields, can you respond to that? I'm sorry, I was just trying to take myself off of mute. Um, no, it wasn't. This was actually done I think under the previous council person, it would, so that would have been prior to 2016. Right. Hmm. Well, uh, Madam Chair, it sounds like all of the facts are not clear and I would support postponing any action today to have the owner meet with representatives from planning and building and housing along with her architect to really understand what needs to come before us. I would agree. Uh, so, Mr. Fugo, Ms. Reed, um, at this particular point in time, uh, given the testimony that we've heard and the uh, recommendations from uh, Mr. Riccardi and Ms. Fields, um, it, it seems to me that it would be in your best interest to ask for a postponement uh, so that you would have time to confer with city planning, um, this parking area along the side of the building and the parking on the sidewalk is going to need to be addressed. Um, and you also have the issue of the building parcel being consolidated with the other three parcels of the parking lot. So what would you like to do at this point? Um, go ahead, Ms. Reed. I'm, I'm at a loss for words. Because um, I believe Ms. Um, Fields was there when we discussed the parking lot and the consolidation came up <laughs> and, and they agreed that it was okay. We had um, consolidated those three lots and they did not have to be consolidated with the building. Um, our, our, the other um, contractor, Mr. Kate set in on the meeting and he brought up, he named the different parking lots that, um, you know, aren't connected with the building um, that, you know, like I said, we may decide to sell that lot um, or, or whatever, you know, but it's, we've been through this. If I could make, if I can make something clear. Okay. If the ahead, if the Mr. bill this this is Richard Riccardi. If the lot upon which the building sits is not consolidated with this new proposed parking lot, then a use variance will be required because the standalone parking lot is not permitted. So um I guess what I'm saying is uh is it if 
it's not it's not mandatory that the the lot upon which the building sits be consolidated but if it is not consolidated then and and that's the note at at the i think at the end of 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 how this uh how this is phrased in the in the write up um on the agenda <clears throat> if that lot is not consolidated then a use variance was required per 348.04 a4 um and and again it i i'm at a loss as to why uh with this huge parking lot that's that's consolidated that's a result of three separate lots being consolidated why those few spaces which seem very dangerous um are, are needed on the side thank you mr riccardi miss reed uh mr fugo the parking area that's at the side of the building particularly the cars that are on the sidewalk that situation needs to be addressed um and so again right um, i i just have a couple can i when you're sure. done can go I, ahead yeah um what was the previous wasn't the previous variance a use variance that timed out madam chair i can answer that question thank you oh yes maurice has put it up on the screen <clears throat> yeah section 348.03 c4 was mentioned in that adjudication that a parking lot as a main use is prohibited in the urban form overlay district. Um, however, this variance has expired, so those rights have expired. Correct. Okay, I just want to make sure it was it was granted once. Um, well, it's not in this variance that's before us, right? right. I don't see use as a stated correct exception here. So at this point, the motion before well not the motion the calendar before us doesn't have a use variance so it doesn't help you so this has to get postponed and reworked right so mr fugo miss reed um we're we're suggesting that you ask for postponement um if we vote today um this may not go in your favor yeah madam um, chair Sorry to interrupt. Yes, Mr. yes. We need to repost this. Um, this the right the proper information did not go out. So the question would be to the appellant. Um, it doesn't sound like she wants to consolidate, um, but if she did want to consolidate, um, the the correct information is there, and the consolidation can come later as a condition. But if the appellant is stating on the record that she's not going to consolidate, then it has to be reposted that this will be a standalone parking lot. Thank you. And so the, the soonest date that we can get that on the agenda would be November 21st. Okay. That, Madam Chair, may I say one more thing to the owner? Yes. Either way she goes, it would be in her interest to address the condition that's on the east side of the building. Correct. So to Mr. Fugo and Ms. Reed, um, without addressing, as Ms. Brown uh, pointed out to you, without addressing the parking situation that is um, shown in the image that we're seeing now and the parking on the street, um, that, that has to be taken care of. Um, whether, whether you consolidate the lots or not. I am, Mr. So, I am. Uh, co-owner of the property you have to be sworn in sir if you'd like yeah. to speak okay. uh, can i be sworn in yes sir i'm happy to do so do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to hear is give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth please raise your hand reply i do state your name and your address please i do james reed five Five two two Kipling Court, Richmond Heights, Ohio, four four one four three. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Uh, I'd like to say this: that um, one thing about it, if we get this parking lot, that it, that 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 problem would not exist. The reason that that problem exists is because whenever it rain or snow or something, it's too muddy over there to park. 
And this is why we need that parking lot to clear this area. And besides this, the the the, the, the building and the businesses next down the street on Harvard, they have uh, handicapped uh, lanes for, for the handicapped to drive the, the uh, wheelchairs in and everything. And they don't not only block that, but they block the sidewalks, everything, and there's nothing done about it. They park through your side. They even park all the way from our existing business all the way down to where the, where the fire department is on the side, on the sidewalk. And there's nothing done about it. There's nothing said about it. All we're trying to do is make the area better, but it seems like no one wants this to go through. Yeah. We've been trying to do this for four years. It's consistent costing us treacherous money. And every time we have these meetings, there's another problem that kept come up. And, and to me, I believe this stuff like it is. I'm not sick of even dealing with you all, trying to get something done because you all don't want anything done. Um. Mr. Reed, thank you for your input. Um, what what other businesses are doing is not before us today. I understand that. variances are before us today. I understand that. And what we really would like you to do is work with the city planning department and excuse me, take do care you, of the situation so that you, you can move forward on this. Going through this for four years, we have city planning, and we have met with city planning. And everything, every time we get to this point, there's another problem that haven't been presented before. Sir, your previous variance expired, so you're before us today with new variances. So it we're looking at this in a fresh light. And nobody so, moves and do their work down there. I can appreciate your frustration, but we'd very much like to have you work with city planning to get things resolved so that you can I, move forward. I'm recommending to the owners. <laughs> That we do postpone it. What would really be helpful, though, is if we can get a commitment to a meeting very soon with planning, because we really need. I've only been involved with this for a year in part, but it has been a four-year project for these people, and I know everyone on this board shares their frustration. We want to achieve this goal, so if we need to postpone it to make the next step, but I really would like a commitment to a meeting. Even I, I'll set a date now if we can with the city planning because we want to get this going because I'm engaged to do the yellow part, you know, but expanding it and getting this completed is the goal. Correct. May I speak, please? Um, this is Miss Thompson. I don't I see the hand button and I've pressed it several times. Um, the parking on the sidewalk there is a regular occurrence. It's it's as long as the um, bar is open, there are cars parked on the sidewalk at all times. And when you stated that it looks like it's a very dangerous um, thing, it is. It's, it's extremely dangerous. I've seen children on bicycles. I've seen people walking. I've seen cars hit one another because of that parking on the sidewalk. I don't know whether um, changing anything there would make a difference, but I would ask that he could have his patrons please stop parking on that sidewalk and in my driveway um, because it is a very extremely, there is a gas station across the street on 175th of Sunoco and it's busy all the time as well. And it has two entrances on 175th and one entrance on Harvard. And cars are just swerving and moving constantly from that um, gas station, and it makes 175th right there at that property an extremely dangerous place. Thank you for that input, Ms. Thompson. And, and I did find the chat button. I sent Ms. Reed mm. my information and asked her to send her email back. She has not responded. Okay. Um, we will give her, the, uh, she will, um, thank you for sending that to her. Uh, um, we, well, hopefully she will respond to you later. Uh, Ms. Fields, um, are you able to set a time to meet with the architect? Yes, I can, uh, as soon as this meeting is over, we can uh, connect and uh, set a date sometime this week. Excellent, okay. So, Mr. Fugo, um, are you asking for a postponement? We can move you to, um, I believe the, uh, uh, 
21st of November. Is that correct, Ms. Kukla? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. And, and for the record, the, the board can postpone themselves. Okay. We don't we don't necessarily need the appellant to ask for the postponement. And all right. Um, since it is a, a situation that the all of the correct information was not posted to the um, public, then a postponement would be necessary. Okay. Uh, board, shall we postpone? Do you have objections to that? No objection. No, no objection. Okay. No objection. Okay. All right. So we'll post. Postpone to the 21st of November then. Thank you, Ms. Kukla. Thank you. All right, next case, please. All right, our next case is calendar number 22-183. This is at 3244 St. Clair Avenue. Joe Lasik proposes to add patio outdoor seating and change the use from store to one dwelling unit to and one dwelling unit to bar restaurant and one dwelling unit in a C3 semi industry district and a live work overlay district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland codified ordinances as stated in the public record and the agenda of which there is one. And with that, I will hand it over to Ms. Brown for the oath. I'm swearing in all who are present for this case. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Please raise your hand. Reply, I do. State your name and your address, please. I do. Uh, my name is Gerard Goody. My address is 5015 Herman Avenue, Cleveland, Ohio, 44102. Anyone else for this case? Rogero Fatica, 3304 St. Clair Avenue, Northeast Cleveland, Ohio, 44114, and I do. Madam Chair, is Mr. Gerard representing the owner today? Mr. Gerard Goody? Yes, I am. And do we have a letter? From the applicant saying that he is approved. Uh, I did drop a agent authorization form into the um, zoning board of appeals this morning. Yes, I have that, Madam Chair. Okay, great. We can move forward. Thank you. All right. Okay, history of the property. Thank you, Madam Chair. There's been no change in the underlying zoning since 1929. It remains in the semi-industry district. Um, it was placed in the live work overlay district in 2002. In our records administration office, we only found that in 1940, there was a permit issued to replace brick piers for a storefront. And in 1941, a permit was issued to erect a private garage. <clears throat> and then in 1953, a double face neon sign was erected on the property. And then 1968, a permit was issued to erect a chain link fence and a guardrail. Uh, there are no variances on file and nothing of note in the more recent history. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kukla. Could we have the legal standard, please? Madam Chair, members of the board, appellant is requesting an area variance from the off street parking regulations of the zoning code. To obtain the area variance, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variance will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Goody, would you like to tell us what you'd like to do, please? Uh, yes, good morning, and thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Um, Basically, what we're just trying to do is uh, use use our own uh, property here to add a patio. Um, we won't be using any of the city sidewalk. Um, I actually have a different plan, which I dropped off uh, today, which would involve us using a door off of the left side of the property. So on the opposite side of where you see the exit coming along uh, the sidewalk here, um, basically on the other side uh, of the bar, we were there's a uh, framework for a door now. Uh, so we'd have an exit off the bar side 
and uh, a fence that would contain um, the patio. So we wouldn't be using any of the public land. We'd be only be using our land. Um, Madam Chair, I'm sorry to interrupt Mr. Goody, but I do have no that problem. site plan or the floor plan. Um, and I can scan that over and send it to Maurice if you would like to see it. I think that would be very helpful. Thank you. Hold on a moment. Mr. Goody, we're going to take, uh, we're going to do that, uh, put through the new plan so we can have that on the screen. Okay, great. So if you'll give us just a pause for just a moment so we can make that happen. I think that sure. would be helpful for the board. Madam Chair, while we're waiting, may I ask a question? Do you have an operator for the bar and, and kitchen? I'm sorry, you have an operator? Someone who's going to uh, perform the business there. It's, it's, is yeah. it a business currently or? No? Yes, it's currently a business. So um, basically it's, it's the previous owner uh, has been there for 53 years, uh, Joe Lassick. In February of this year, I took over as uh, basically the operating manager of the bar. I am looking to um, purchase the property and the bar um, and, and make it my own. But um, a few of the things that I would like to see is that we could get a patio on the property uh, before I go forward with a purchase of the property. Um, but I've been the operating manager since February of this year. Thank you for that question, Ms. Brown, and for your response, Mr. Goody. Okay, okay it's been questions? sent to Mr. Rulins and uh, it is in route to him currently. Okay, thank you. Um, How also, long has if I the can. Business, I'm sorry. How long has the business been operating under your oversight? Since February of this year. Since February. Okay, thank so, you. Yeah, it's been in operation since 1921, so there is a lot of history. I believe it moved over to this property uh, in our early 40s. Um, and as I said, the previous owner has been there for 53 years. Um, there was the original application was denied for lack of off street parking. Uh, my my current proposed plan has six off street parking spots. The requirement was for 10 off street parking spots. I have come to an agreement with the owner of the parking lot across the street. And I have leased uh, 10 parking spots from him. It's a directly caddy corner from our building. Uh, they have a large parking lot and I signed a five year lease uh, with with that owner to satisfy our off street parking. Um, our businesses operate at different times of the day. Uh, them, them being, you know, a daytime uh, office, us being a bar and tavern, uh, we're operating at night. So there wouldn't be really any um, conflict with uh, with timing of the lot. So uh, I think we'll have plenty of parking to satisfy our off street parking requirement. Have you and signed this lease for the parking, Mr. Goody? Yes, that was also dropped off to the uh, Board of Appeals this morning. Okay. All right. Ms. Kukla, do we have that in hand? Do you know? Hold on, give me one moment. All right. Yes, I do see one. All right. Here and so with that lease, parking. that's for 10 parking spaces. Correct. Okay, great. So with uh, that, we technically have 16 off street parking spots with that lease. Right. With the six existing on our property still. Thank you. To the board, any questions or comments? Madam Chair, I have a, a question. The garage that's on the property, is that not going to be used for parking? No, that's uh, that's still being used for storage. The current uh, owner has that uh, pretty jam packed with uh, an old Buick Regal and uh, other items that um, we will not be using the, the the garage for parking. Okay, thank you. Any other Madam questions Chair? or comments, Madam Chair? I do I have a comment. To... This is Liz. We yes. don't know if those parking spaces are legal. Um, I don't think they were reviewed by Building and Housing. Uh, as you can see, they're head in parking spaces and they would go across the sidewalk, similar to the last case. Uh, it was back on to Superior Avenue or, or yeah, back on to Superior Avenue as well as East uh, 33rd Street. Um, so just so the board knows, this was not reviewed under the uh, building and housing review. And um, we don't know if they're legal. So 
um, I'm not sure, but just, just so the appellant knows that we are not making a decision on those parking spaces today. And those are the parking spaces that are on his property, correct? That's correct. Six that are on his property, but he does have that, one under the lease. That are being proposed for the property. There's no parking on the property right now. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Rollins. Okay. Right. And, and just Williams, to could clarify. Could you just verify that those were not on the original site plan? I'm, I didn't see them. Uh, those were not, and um, just to clarify, they would not be, the parking wouldn't be on the sidewalk. There is not more than enough space for cars to pull in, uh, in and not be on the sidewalk and be completely on our property. May I ask a question? Is there a curb cut to get to those parking spaces? Yes. Any other questions or comments, board? Uh, can we see the th that picture? Yeah. So there's a curb cut to the right there. It looks like it's cut. It cuts off. We can't tell. Uh, Madam Chair, I do not believe there's a curb cut on St. Clair Avenue. Well, if he, if we have a copy of the 10 parking spaces that will be leased. We have we have a copy of the lease. Liz, uh, Liz has that in hand. That's and correct. You, and you know where those are? Do you, you know, there's a. I mean, the yes, Madam or, Chair. Yeah. To that question, the uh, the parking lease says dated September 16, 2022, uh, is by and between. Clee St. Clair LLC with a mailing address of 6161 Oak Tree Boulevard, Independence, Ohio, uh, with uh, is made with Gerard Goody with a street address of 3244 St. Clair Avenue, Ohio, uh, for 10 parking spaces located at 3311 St. Clair Avenue. Uh, Madam Chair, Boris Rollins, City Planning, uh, to uh, Liz Kukla, was that part of the package that was dropped off this morning? Yes. Madam Chair, I would recommend that we postpone this project. Uh, you know, everything has been submitted, uh, you know, this morning. We have had no time to review the lease. We've had no time to review the drawings. There's been two weeks notice that all of these things had to be, you know, submitted by yet last week. Um, so I would suggest that we postpone this till the staff and building and housing has a chance to actually review the new materials that were submitted early this morning. Thank you, Mr. Rollins. Uh, board? Are you in agreement? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Goody, we're um, because of the late submission of your documents. Um, we have not, as Mr. Rulin stated, um, city planning has not had a time to review everything. So we're going to postpone your case um, okay. to a future date, and um, so that they can uh, review everything and. Um, uh, we'll have you get in touch with them so you can work through that. Um, Liz, do we have a date? Yes, Madam Chair, we could put them on the November 21st date, which okay. fills up that date. Okay, great. Thank you. So, Mr. Thank Goody, you. we'll see you back on November 21st. Within that time, you'll have an opportunity to work with city planning and get everything worked out. Okay. Um, they'll help you through this process. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, I just sure. wanted to point out that the new site plan probably should be uh, reviewed by the Department of Building and Housing for compliance uh, for the new parking that they're proposing. Okay, so Mr. Goody, you want you're going to want to take care of that as well. Okay, so I need okay. to follow up with Building and Housing, and I'm sorry, what other department before and city planning. the 21st? Building and, and Housing planning. and City Planning. Uh, Maurice, who's the city planner for his area? Um, I'm not 100% sure he could, we can work with him, but I, the main thing is, is getting the plans, uh, uh, adjudicated for, uh, you know, to be reviewed by building and housing more so than, than city planning. Okay. But we'd right. like to have a take, take a chance to look at the lease and, you know, the actual address of where it is and everything. I can't do that right now during the middle of the meeting. Right. Um, so it, the, more, the most important thing is, you know, getting the plans over to, to Rick Riccardi's department. And there's Mr. Riccardi with his hand raised now. Okay, Mr. Riccardi. 
uh, we can go, I can go over to Board of Zoning Appeals and look at the plan submitted there. Uh, okay, so great. there's no uh, mix up or delays and, and like another delivery. I, I can look at the plan submitted to BGA. Okay, great. So, um, so well, that that will help you out, Mr. Goody. So we'll move this forward. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Uh, next case, please. Thank you. All right. Our next case is calendar number 22-184. This is at 1209 Clark Avenue. Scott Sosenko proposes to build a parking lot in a K2 limited retail business district and an urban form overlay district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland codified ordinances as stated in the public record and the agenda of which there are four. And with that, I will hand it over to Ms. Brown for the oath. Thank you. I'm swearing in all who are present for this case. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Please raise your hand, reply I do, state your name and your address, please. I do. Uh, my name is Richard Sasenko. The address is 1201 Clark Avenue, Cleveland, Ohio, 44109. Corey Reardon, Executive Director, Tremont West 2406, Professor ID. Uh, Donna Gregonis, 2406, Professor Avenue, I do. Anyone else? Okay, Madam Chair. Right. Could we have the history of the property, please? Sure, Madam Chair, this property was originally zoned general retail in 1929. In 2015, it was changed to the limited retail district. Um, in our records administration office, we found that in 1942, we found a permit that was issued to alter a dwelling to a two family residence. And um, 1973, a permit was issued to rehabilitate a three family residence. But then Madam Chair, the, the more pertinent information is that in uh, 2005, a permit was issued to board and secure all first floor basement and accessible openings. Um, and again, in 2006, we see that a boarding cost was assessed to the property. But then in 2008, there was a violation notice issued stating that um, abatement to vacant lot cleanup payment was required. So at some point, the property um, had a demolition on it. Uh, then it went from being used with a building on it to being vacant. And that's all that I have, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Lots of activity on that parcel. Uh, could we have the legal standard, please? Madam Chair, members of the board, appellant is requesting a use variance and area variances from the driveway drainage and landscaping regulations of the zoning code. To obtain the use variance, appellant must prove that denying the request will result in an unnecessary hardship particular to the property, such that there will be no economically feasible use of the property without the variance, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variance will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. To obtain the area variances, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variances will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you. Mr. Sasinko, are you, uh, um, I see we have Scott Sasinko. Yes, uh, that's my that? son. All that's right. my son, I'm representing him. Okay, all right. Uh, Liz, do we need a letter for that? Um, yes, Madam Chair, we should have one. Okay, did, did we receive one? I don't see one. Does the representative? No. Oh, okay. We could move forward as we have done in the past, Madam Chair, and uh, require that after the hearing. Okay, so uh, Mr. Sasenko, we're going to need a letter from your son um, stating that you are allowed to speak on his behalf and that needs to be submitted to Ms. Kukla. Yes, ma'am. We are gonna move forward with your case. 
So just make sure that that uh, is taken care of for us. Thank you. Okay, go ahead and tell us what you'd like to do. Alrighty, uh, right now, as you can see, it's presently a uh, being used for parking. It's graveled in, which we graveled in after the house was uh, torn down several years ago. Uh, it's right on the alleyway there, so it's all there's no cut-ins needed or anything on that area over there. Uh, we have a business two doors down, and uh, it's a bar, and we wanted like to use that for bar parking, and also. The neighborhood is using the parking lot, as you can see, the few cars that are there now. Uh, a lot of off street parking was taken away, and uh, people do use it at night. You'll find six, seven neighbors parking over there. Uh, so, what we like to do is we like to uh, clean it up a little bit, asphalt it, put some drains, landscaping, and continue using it as parking. Uh, it's, it's greatly needed in the area over there. Plus, I had already talked and been working with the city of Cleveland, the economic development department, and uh, they have helped me and they are granting me uh, uh, a grant to help support uh, the parking lot going in. Like I say, it's well used. Plus, around the corner, we have the Christmas Story House. And at the time of the year, uh, that place is really busy and we do they do park there. So, as you can see, it's on an alleyway too there. So, it's not really... It'll really clean up the neighborhood. Uh, the uh, the neighbors they they I had sent letters there that they agree that uh, they have no problems with the uh, parking lot going in. Uh, both sides gas station is on the corner, so that would really clean that up. Plus, possibly the gas station will do a little better job along that fence where the guardrail is because they don't seem to take care of that very well. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sasenko. All right. Uh, would you, uh, who would like to go first, Corey or Donna? I'll let Donna speak on behalf of your mom. Okay, thank you. Good morning, Donna. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. Um, good morning, Rich. <laughs> um, so, Rich has been working with the organization for a couple of years regarding these variances. Um, and there was an overwhelming um, agreement and um, understanding that the proposed improvement to the parking lot avenue would be really beneficial to his business and overwhelming support of the variances. So there were no real, there weren't any issues that people saw after a meeting with the community and economic development committee approved it as well. So, Rich did do the lengthy community process and everybody overwhelmingly supports him. So, thanks, Rich. Great. Thanks, Donna. Corey, you have anything to add? No, I, I, well, I'll add 1 thing is that it has been a long time coming. We've been working with the city of Cleveland on this for over 4 years to uh, create a better parking environment over there. It's, it's very needed for the community and we support it as does the economic development department. All right, board, any questions or comments? Yeah, actually, I do have a question. So. You need the parking for your bar. You also said neighbors need the parking because there's been a loss of that. And it also fills as overflow parking for, you know, attractions. So how does that all get managed? Will neighbors have an assigned space? Um, is it just first come first serve? What's the thought about operation really? using the space well as you see there's that big house that's right next door and that's a three family so i have four or five cars out of there well we allow them to park in there because we're neighbors uh we're going to allow the parking toward the back of the lot like when you see that pickup truck we're going to give them four or five spots and that'll be their spots and they'll leave the front open for uh bar business and uh overflow parking that sounds like a good plan thank you for, for your reply we, we, will, we will be taking care of it. Uh, we're not we're not charging anybody to park there. We'll be doing the plowing and the cleaning over there uh, all the time. Thank Excellent. you. Thank you, and thank you for that question, Ms. Brown. Uh, City planning, do you have anything to add? I actually have a question. Uh, oh, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, 
just to the, the, the landscaping buffer, can you speak to that a little bit more, Mr. Sosenko? Yes. Uh, yes, I uh, originally put a plan for a four foot bumper, uh, but apparently I got it wrong. It's supposed to be six foot. I did take it back and change it. The front will be a six foot, a six foot wide. Uh, there'll be uh, evergreens and shrubs planted across the front, and there'll be a, a walkway in the middle, a four foot walkway for the people to get from the parking lot to the main sidewalk. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for that question, Ms. Roca. Okay, city planning, anything to add? Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. We're still in city planning. Yeah, I had spoken to Matt Moss, the neighborhood planner for this area, um, and, and he filled me in on all the background of this parking lot that, in fact, they have been working. Uh, he has been working and the city has been working with uh, with the applicant for quite a while to get this parking lot done. So we're happy to see it get done. Uh, my one comment was going to be that we wanted the six foot landscape strip and the applicant has told us that he's going to do that. Um, the only other question I have, is it possible to move the, uh, the entrance closest to uh, Clark Avenue, the 15 feet back that is required by code, so the entrance and exit from the parking lot isn't so close to the Clark Avenue uh, uh, intersection was West 13th Place. There's really no nothing I can I can move it back to the lot farther if you prefer. Yeah, that is no problem. We can put it a little farther yeah. back. Yes. That's yes, exactly. That. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I'm saying. And then I guess to Mr. Riccardi, do you need um, uh, engineer engineering drawings in order to uh, uh, approve this for the uh, the uh, catch basins and the drainage? Yes, that would be required. Um, so those plans are sent to water pollution control for you know for their review, and and that is what they require. Yes. <clears throat> So just that's just for informational purposes, but we uh, we totally support this uh, this uh, parking lot. Okay, Mr. Rulins, um, either of those things need to be a condition to the to the proposal here. Well, the the engineer drawings, yeah, I don't believe uh, building and housing can sign off on those uh, and issue the permits until they have something to review. Okay, great. All right, anything else, board? I'm chair. This is Liz. Yes. So that that is a good question regarding grading and drainage. Um, do we see, Maurice, I can't read it very well. Do we see the location of the drains? Uh, I believe the applicant stated there would be drains installed. It does look like the circles are drains, the C's on there. Oh no, that's guardrail. I, I'm not really sure. We probably need a better drawing. And an engineer drawing would have all of that on there. So we definitely need a better drawing than than what's shown. Mr. Sasinko, um, you're understanding what the request is here. Are you able to comply with that for us? Yes, I am. Okay, great. All right, anything else? Board? All right, I'll entertain a motion, please. Uh, Madam Chair, I move approval of calendar 22-184. Um, requesting um, change in use to install a parking lot uh, for the purposes of um, providing parking to the adjacent three-story residents and other neighborhood needs uh, as discussed in the testimony. Um, the Approval is conditioned on submittal of engineer drawings identifying drains uh, as required. Uh, also, a letter indicating uh, Rich Sosinko could uh, represent his son, the owner of, of the uh, property. Uh, and an adherence to all of the conditions uh, set forth in the calendar. And with that, I propose we move forward with approval. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Could I have a second? Board member holds our second. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Kukla, sorry, I just had to decline a call. Uh, Ms. Kukla, could you call the roll, please? Thing. <clears throat> Ms. Roga? Yes. Ms. Holter? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. B? Yes. 
Honor number 22-184 is granted conditionally. We will hold ratification until we receive that site plan showing the drainage. Uh, and once we receive that, we will send the appellant a letter. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sasinko. Good luck to you. It sounds like you've got a lot of support. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good to see you. Uh, okay, next case, please. Next case is calendar number 22-189. This is at 1446 West 114th Street. Teresa H. Woodland proposes to build a new garage and shed in a B12 family residential district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland codified ordinances as stated in the public record and the agenda of which there is one. And with that, I will hand it over to Ms. Brown for the oath. I'm swearing in all who are present for this case. Uh, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Please raise your hand, reply I do, state your name and your address, please. Uh, my name is, uh, I do, my name is uh, Francis Woodland. I live at 1446 West 114th Street. I am a homeowner, it's owned by two people. I'm the second person on the, on the um, title. Anyone else for this case? Madam Chair. Thank you. Could I have a history of the property, Ms. Kukla? Thank you, Madam Chair. The property was originally zoned multifamily in 1929. In 1972, it was changed to the, the current two-family residential district. Uh, we found in our records administration office that in 1973, a permit was issued to correct the violations to a two-family dwelling. There are two variance cases on file in calendar numbers 77 dash 100 and calendar numbers 80 dash 297 and those were in the years of 1978 and 1981 respectively variances were refused to change from two family to multi-family and then madam chair there's nothing of note in the more recent history thank you thank you could we have the legal standard please Madam Chair, members of the board, appellant is requesting an area variance from the accessory structure regulations of the zoning code. To obtain the area variance, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variance will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you. Ms. Woodland, would you like to tell us what you'd like to do, please? Um, yes, I did send some slides over. So, um, yes, this is what I sent over. So, uh, the house, the house was built in, uh, 1904. It never had a driveway, um, or parking in the back. It was always a two family. And, um, I've had, I've owned the house for 20 years. And, um, due to the fact that it's a two family, it's much deeper than the other houses on the street. So my backyard is very precious the space that i have i do enjoy using my yard a lot as you can see i have lots of flower gardens and vegetable gardens around um, my property and so i want to utilize every uh sort of square foot or square inch of my backyard when i put in a um shed a separate shed and garage building if you want to go to the next slide So I'm proposing two separate buildings just because typically if you build a what, three car, or two and a half car in order to get some storage, I would have a very narrow strip of property um, on the left-hand side of the property. And, and in most cases when that happens, um, it's kind of abandoned land. It's not really utilized very well. Um, so I'm preparing, proposing these two separate buildings and I want to push them as close to the property line as I can, noting that there are some, some um, building code restrictions. So, um, uh, so that's what I'm showing on these documents, the one foot from the property line on both sides. You can go to the next slide. So the design is um, to reflect the historic uh, features of the, and characters of the uh, house. It's a, it was built in 1904 as the house has a stone base. So the garage will have a um, concrete, a split face concrete block base, wood siding, and um, 
a sloped roof to kind of replicate the roof on the house. Um, and I want to maximize the non paved areas between the shed and the garage. Um, and then eliminate that unusable space on the sides of the property. And as you can see from the photograph, um, that's the back of the deck from the two families. They share one staircase coming down and you would see that garden as you uh, exit the house which is kind of the purpose of split, splitting the two pieces um, side by side. I also want to make sure I get enough parking. Currently, we have three cars in the back, and that saves from street parking. So I want to maintain that uh, perpendicular uh, paved area, and then I would have two, car, two uh, cars would be in the garage. Okay, you can go to the last slide. And the purpose, um, as I said, like, it's about enjoying the space to its maximum potential. Um, I envision that I would put some sort of uh, garden back or some sort of space that's very pleasant, either look at or be in between these two buildings. Um, I have been participating in Garden Walk Cleveland. I am big, really big on gardening. And um, this, this uh, house, I'm going to be utilize, utilizing the Home Heritage Loan Program to um, build this garage and shed. And is my presentation. Great, thank you. Uh, city planning. Uh, Madam Chair, thank you, Maurice Rollins. Uh, this is a very nice uh, proposal. Everything looks good. However, um, we just cannot recommend approval on these uh, one foot variances. You, there's a fence on the one side. You cannot access the side of, you will not be able to access that side of the garage with a one foot distance between the garage and the fence, which is why the minimum distance is 18 inches. And even that is really tight. Um, and there is an existing fence right there on the side of the garage. So we're talking six inches on one on the, uh, by the garage and six inches from the shed. I just don't see the practical difficulty of why uh, it can't be, uh, you can't meet code. Uh, we really have a problem with the fact that somebody can't access part of their structure without going on the neighbor's property. Board, any questions or comments? Uh, Ms. Woodland, would you like to respond to city planning's comment? Yeah, I, I understand the concern with the access of the fence and I was not intending on putting back, working with the uh, my neighbor and not putting that section of fence back. Um, and I understand that I would have to access their property if I need to get to the side of the garage. The other side of the property is an apartment building and there's a um, parking lot on that side. And I don't see any changes ever happening to that. But um, yeah, and I and 18 inches, 12 inches, it's still not accessible regardless. So um, I understand the concern, but I'm always going to have to access um, my side of the garage through my neighbor's property. And uh, Madam Chair, just to reiterate, um, that's true. Uh, one foot, 18 inches is very narrow and 12 inches is even less narrow. And you can't guarantee that the neighbors are going to stay next door on either side of that property. And then by that way, you are actually infringing on the neighbor's ability to build something 18 inches close to their property line because her, her shed is is closer than 18 inches. So it's, you know, it's six inches, but I think it's a valuable six inches here. I just, I just don't see the practical difficulty. There's plenty of room in the yard uh, for one foot of variance between the two structures. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes. This is Liz. It's the 18 inches is required from the rear property line as well. Just for clarification for the applicant and any um, board member that may not know that. Thank you. Board, any questions or comments? I have a question um, to Liz's comment. What is the distance between the property line, rear property line, and the back of the structure? Three feet, it looks like. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So it actually could be pushed even further back if you wanted to gain a little bit more room that way, too. So, Ms. Woodland, would you be willing to uh, adjust your placement of the footprint of your buildings? 
Do you mean pushing it back or pushing it uh, uh, from the property line from the sides? Uh, well, the side setback is is the biggest issue. Um, and, and I know that there's not a big difference between 12 inches and 18 inches, uh, but 18 inches um, would allow for someone to uh, move along the side of the building. Um, just for instance, a standard dining room chair is typically 18 inches square. So um, that is that is the space that is often allocated for uh, a standing person when you're doing space planning. Um, so um, would you be willing to move the building, adjusting it over uh, to meet the 18 inches? And then Mr. Rulins, you're, you're saying about the rear yard setback? Oh, I'm just saying that you could, you could move it further back if she wanted more room that way, but it's fine where it is as far as the rear yard. I okay. think Ms. Kukla was just pointing out that it doesn't have to be three foot off the rear yard. Okay. So would those adjustments be something that you would be willing to do, Ms. Woodland? Um, I guess I'm, I'm looking for the uh, Board of Zoning Appeal to either approve or deny my request. So if it's denied, then I will move my buildings over. Okay. Um, before we call that question, Madam Chair, I'd like to yes. know what is the distance between the face of the shed to the side of the garage? Because that's where the 12 inches would come from. It's currently about, um, it's less than 16 feet. It's about uh, 15 and a half feet. Any other questions, board? All right, so Ms. Woodland, you're asking us to make a decision today. Um, Ms. Kukla, would you like to um, uh, clarify what happens if we deny the variance today in terms of being able to seek any future variances? That's correct, Madam Chair. There is an issue with seeking variances in the future for uh, the exact plan that they're requesting or the exact variance they're requesting today. So uh, again, Madam Chair, we are talking about the 18 inches. So if the board does not agree with giving them the, the one foot that is required, then the variance would um, be denied unless the applicant wishes to withdraw at this point. But again, going forward, if you are to deny this case today, the applicant would um, have to comply with the zoning code. Does that clarify the situation for you, Ms. Woodland? Yes, it does. Okay. Do you still wish for us to make a decision on this today? Or would you like to make changes to your plan? Um, I'd like you to make a decision and then I will, if, if denied, I will make changes to the plan and resubmit it to the building department. All right. Okay, board, you have heard Ms. Woodland's wishes. I will entertain a motion. Okay, um, Madam Chair, having heard testimony from uh, Francis Woodland, uh, seeking a variance of 18 inches for the site property lines uh, for construction of a garage and shed. Oh, excuse me, seeking uh, a waiver against the 18 inches with, for a proposed 12 inch side yard uh, for the garage and shed. I move that the board deny it based on testimony from city planning proposing that the space is insufficient for the homeowner uh, to access uh, their property without going onto the property of their neighbors on both sides. And having discussed this with the homeowner who uh, suggests that they wanted a vote today, I move denial of the request. Could I have a second, please? 
Madam Chair, Board Member Roca seconds. Thank you. Ms. Kukla, please call the roll. Ms. Holzer? Yes. Ms. Roca? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Vape? Yes. Under number 22-189 is denied. It'll be ratified next week and we will send the appellants a letter. Okay, thank you for your time. Thank you. A case that's on the agenda um, here at the very end. This is regarding calendar number 22-105 at 592 Dedison Avenue. Um, there are applicants here to request an amendment to the resolution that was granted on uh, July 11th. Um, if you would like me to um, read anything further, I can, or if you would just like to swear in the applicant and hear their testimony, we can do that as well. Uh, for the benefit of the new board members, I think it would be beneficial to read the information you have. Thank you. Calendar number 22-105 regarding 5902 Denison Avenue. DC Kelly Investments proposed to establish use as a CBD sales on a first floor of an existing three unit apartment building in a local retail business district. Um, at the time, these code, the following code sections were requested um, variances for relief from in a section 349.04 which states that 15 off-street parking spaces are required um, and that six legally conforming parking spaces were provided. Um, one parking space was shown not legally conforming due to being within 10 feet of the wall. Um, code section 349.07a states that an accessory off-street parking spaces, driveways and maneuvering areas shall be properly graded and drained so that the water is drained within the lot providing such parking spaces. And then Madam Chair, there was screening required between the parking spaces and the adjoining residents. And um, that's per se code section 349.08. Again, all of that is in front of you. Um, this board granted the variance to establish the use with the condition that proper paving and drainage be installed. And now the appellant is proposing to drain the parking lot to the street instead of within their own lot due for due to unforeseen circumstances. I hope that helps. Thank you, Ms. Kukla. Could we have the legal standard, please? Madam Chair, members of the board, appellant is <clears throat> requesting area variances from the parking regulations of the zoning code. To obtain the area of variances, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variances will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you. Ms. Brown? I'm swearing in all who are present for this case. Please swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Please raise your hand, reply I do, state your name and your address, please. I do, Corrine Kelly, 371 Windy Hill Lane, Solon, Ohio, 44139. I do, Evan Peavy, 8104, Bailey Ave, Cleveland, Ohio, 4410. Okay, anyone else? Okay, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, who's acting as the spokesperson for this case? Kevin, I can do it if that's okay. All right. So um, we have had, um, we agreed to put in paving um, on Denison. Um, however, when we agreed to do it, we didn't understand that the, the street is a cobblestone and it's older and there's no easy access to tie into a sewer. We had about 12 different companies come out um, to try to get this work done. And actually one of the companies um, put a letter together explaining the difficulty of trying to put drainage into the lot, um, which I believe Ms. Kukla has. And so what we're asking for um, are a couple of different options. One, to go ahead and pave it and let it drain into the street. 
or if that's a concern to go ahead and leave it as gravel, which has been for a long time. And we've had the gravel rolled and it's very clean and it's very tight um, to go ahead and leave it as gravel so there's no issue with the drainage. All right. Madam Chair, there is, um, I'm sorry, I, I actually had to take a phone call. Um, sure. There, uh, there is one other option. We did meet with the applicant. I'm not sure if this was stated. There is one other option that we could do something that we don't usually do, um, that we could add a condition into the resolution that states that the parking lot will be paved or there will be some sort of engineered surface meeting the code um, by spring. So the appellant is having an issue with acquiring that certificate of occupancy, uh, because as you know, we hold things pending until we, until we see that there are, uh, well, actually I believe that building and housing will hold it pending the, the, um, the parking lot being updated and, and meeting the code. So the appellant is requesting now that we put some sort of condition into the resolution to extend the required comply by date to sometime, I believe in the spring, giving them time to um, work with the city to find the drain or to, to create a, an engineered surface that will drain within the lot. Thank you for that information, Ms. Kukla. City planning, do you have any comments? Uh, no, just echoing what Ms. Kukla just said. Okay. Board, any questions or comments? Uh, I do have a question. Um, uh, my question is whether other parts of the city uh, and I, I'm not sure where this goes, right? In streets or engineering and construction uh, or, or the sewer department. I mean, I'm not sure who handles this, but if they have agreed to the solution that's being proposed, I mean, just draining to the street doesn't seem like the city's agreeing to that, right? Right, uh, Madam Chair, and again, this is Liz Kukla. So the alternative that I just stated would not allow them to permanently drain to the, to the mm -hmm. sidewalk. So currently, uh, in fact, currently they have the gravel lot that is allowing drainage to happen within the lot. So until the comply by date, they will continue with that situation where it is draining within the lot because of the gravel. Um, what the appellant stated is that she would be willing to pave it, but with the draining going to the street. So there is that other alternative that I stated that they could have a, a different comply by date to pave and drain it properly, you know, so to work with the city and get that okay from the city. Yeah, well, here's the concern that I have uh, and just the question. I have no problem changing the complied by date. My concern is that there's not agreement to what everyone is complying to or agreeing to. And so we're just kicking it, the can down the street. So what happens if we agree to some date in the spring, but the owner and the city don't agree to the solution? So that's my question. So, ma'am, I think you're yeah. saying, this is Perrine, is we're happy to try. We just haven't had someone that's been able to give us a solution for effectively how to drain it. So we're just asking for more time to find a solution and bring it to the city. The contractors that we've had out don't have a reasonable solution for us yet. And the struggle that we're having is um, we're coming up on winter and it's just taking longer to find a solution and soon we're going to run out of time to pave. So we're hoping that we can comply, you know, with what you all are asking. We just need more time to do it. And once we are able to figure out the drainage, we wouldn't be able to pave until spring and that would hold up our occupancy. Thank you for that response. Um, Mr. Williams, it, 
Yes, go ahead. No, go ahead. Good. I'll answer your question first. Okay. Um, I am recalling a case where we had a similar situation where it, um, it was not feasible to drain. And uh, we requested that the, uh, the property owners install a permeable uh, product so that it served as um, not gravel. Uh, but a uh, permeable uh, cementitious product that would be sufficient for parking, but would also allow for adequate drainage on site. Um, is that something that would be applicable in this situation? Yeah, uh, Madam Chair, uh, yes, that would be applicable. And uh, to Mr. Riccardi, maybe he can weigh in too, but that would, that would qualify as an engineered uh, solution to drainage. So, right. and we actually did discuss that with the applicant. They have not fully investigated that aspect of it yet. And we also informed them that we believe the sewer district might have some grant money for people willing to go the uh, permeable paver route. Um, I, I guess what I'm, I what I wanted to say was that you know the city absolutely does not support a parking lot that that drains into the street. We've, to my knowledge, as long as I've been doing this, we we don't usually support those kinds of variances. Right. Um, so this would just be kind of like an extension for us to figure this out. And I'm not an engineer, so I can't comment on, you know, how easy it is to access the drains on uh, the side street here. Uh, I, I guess that's West 59th Street. Um, so we probably need someone, an expert, uh, somebody from water pollution control, I believe, or the appropriate people uh, to weigh in here on this at some point. Whether And we did get the contact information to the applicant uh, for the water pollution control for them to reach out to them. Okay. Uh, I'm in agreement. Um, uh, draining directly into the street is just not something that is um, typically allowed. Um, and opening the street so that it could be connected to the sewer system um, would be a lengthy process um, and uh, perhaps not cost effective. Um, so can can Mr. Riccardi respond to the um, the possibility of using um, uh, a product that would be self draining in the parking lot? The zoning code does allow for um, for these these types of systems, uh, so it doesn't have to be paved, but they have to be engineered. Uh, they have to be engineered solutions. Uh, there has to be the planning into them, and they have to show uh, the subsurface conditions. But no, they're they're there, and 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 they have been used by applicants. But it has to be an engineered solution. Okay, to our applicants, is that something that you would uh, be willing to explore? Is that something you might be uh, you, you would entertain as a solution? Sure. No, that's fine. Um, it's a good suggestion. We're happy to explore it. We just weren't familiar with it before, so we just need a little time to do it. So we're just asking, because the rest of the building renovations are complete, that they would grant us a temporary certificate of occupancy while we're exploring that so we can still go ahead, make use of the property and generate income. Um, really just get us through the winter until this, the spring when we can get the work done. Ms. Kugla, can you respond to that? Is that something that uh, we can do or that can be done, a condition? So I did speak with um, Tom Banover, the chief building official. He did state that that would be um, something that they could do. It's unusual, um, but it, because again, as Ms. Brown stated, it, it, it does seem a little challenging to um, enforce. Uh, however, uh, one, option would be um well i'll just state that tom vanover stated that this is something that we can do uh you know put the specific comply by date in there um and again that would be with the paving and drainage that the applicant agreed to in the original variance approval um meeting the code requirements regarding drainage and such um so yes tom vanover did say this is something that we can do Okay, so uh, we can extend the we can extend the date just to be clear. 
we can extend the date to a date next spring after the weather breaks, uh, allowing them time to explore their options and make that a condition. Is that all correct? Yes. Okay. And Liz, right. just to make sure in the meantime, we'll be granted our certificate of occupancy, right? Uh, that is what I've been told by Mr. Vanover. Okay, thank you. Not of course, that, is, that is up to building and housing. Um, you know, our end is just to uh, make the conditions clear in the resolution in the le in the in the legal document. Are you comfortable with that, Ms. Kelly? Uh, yes, I believe so. Okay. Um, so the occupancy permit is out of our purview, uh, but we can be very clear on the conditions um, in our uh, our document. I guess I, I do just have one question, maybe Mr. Riccardi, if it's out of this purview, who is going to be the one to make the decision on the occupancy permit? This is Richard Riccardi. With building permits applications, the zoning is done first, which is this aspect now. Um, and the paving and drainage is in the zoning code. Um, now, if you get a variance that says you can go ahead and um, and and uh, and and your zoning is approved based on you doing this in the future, um, what will happen then is the zoning will be approved and this will move on to the building code review. And if you meet all aspects of the building code, then the certificate of occupancy uh, theoretically could be granted with that condition that you complete the paving or the alternative paving by whatever date this board uh, would would see to make in the future. So I guess what I'm saying is this is zoning. It's the first phase. The building code review hasn't even happened yet. Okay. And do we bring like um, the output of this meeting to you to do the, the building code review or how and when is that done? I, Madam Chair, this is Liz. I'm sorry to, to jump in um, over Mr. Riccardi, but we do issue the resolution after it's ratified next Monday, and then the appellant will receive a copy of that, which then, yes, they would take over to building and housing. You see, I'm not sure if this was a paper application or was this an online application? It looks like a paper copy that's already been picked up from our office by Mr. Peavy. Um, so we would have to make sure that that is delivered over to building and housing with the update resolution. Um, I guess to Ms. Gelly, do you know where the hard copy application is at this point? Has it been submitted back to building and housing? Evan, you have that, correct? Yes, I do. It has been submitted. Okay, so then we'll have to bring that in. It'll be ratified on Monday, uh, and then by Wednesday, the uh, the file will be ready for the applicant to come and pick up the resolution and deliver it back over to building and housing. Okay, we appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, Liz, a uh, question. If we extend the variance, is there uh, a date at which it expires that they need to complete the work by? Sure. So it would be six months. Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking of the variance rights. Um, so that would be a different. Um, that would be a different comply by date unless you want to, it to coincide with that date. Um, which, of course, would be six months from Monday um, sometime in April. Um, so, you know, the board could make it a month after, you know, may, you know, make it May 1st or, you know, somewhere around that time. Um, um, I think given the fact that we, we may have weather conditions, sometimes we have snow up until, you know, the first part of May and that uh, uh, building, building and construction projects are taking much longer than 
typical, um, I think I'd be inclined to extend past that date, um, probably at least to the 1st of June. Um, to allow them time and um, to get that done. Um, so let me go to the board. Do you have any other questions or comments? I do not. Okay. Uh, is everyone clear on the situation? Anything need clarifying for anyone? Okay. Hearing no comments or questions, I will entertain a motion. Okay. Uh, I move, reg well, regarding calendar 22-105, I move extension of the compliance period for the board variance approved July 11, 2022. Uh, a new compliance period, well, a new, a compliance period for uh, draining, which one is this? For section 349.07A with a new compliance period of June 1st, 2023. I also, advise as indicated on on the uh, calendar that we are not approving the appellant's request to drain the parking lot to the street that we will ex extend the compliance period for the appellant to have time to bring in an engineered solution for the draining uh, that would meet city requirements and that is my motion. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Could I have a second? Board member holds our second. Thank you. Ms. Kugla, could you call the roll, please? Sure. Ms. Roca? Yes. Ms. Holzer? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. B? Yes. Okay, calendar number 22-105, the resolution um, decision made on July 11th has been amended. The resolution for that case will be ratified next Monday, and then we will send the appellant a letter. The file will be ready on Wednesday. Um, and again, Madam Chair, I think maybe we could uh, put an, um, another condition in there that the applicant submit those new drawings to the file here at uh, Board of Zoning Appeals before Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Thank you for that friendly amendment. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, so that should give the, uh, to the appellants, that should give you time to explore some other options. Um, as uh, Mr. Rulins from City Planning noted, there may be an incentive for you to use uh, an engineered product uh, that will self drain on site, um, but you also have the option of going through the process of connecting to the sewer. So, uh, good luck with that, and we'll look forward to getting your new drawings. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, on to old business. Can we have the resolutions on the screen? Thank you. So we have resolution one through five without objection board. No objection. Without objection. No objection. Thank you. Uh, anything else, Ms. Kugla? No, that's it. All right. You should adjourn. So we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Great job, Ms. Bay. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Have a good week, everyone. Me too, thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. All right.